Hey there, welcome back. It's Abby from Chic Peach, and today we're going to take a little detour from the normal decluttering and simplifying journey. Instead, we're going to dive into the dumbest things I've ever bought. Yes, you heard that right. Even I have made some questionable decisions in the past, as you may have seen in some of my decluttering shorts. But is that really a surprise? I mean, coming from a retired or recovering shopaholic? I go back and forth between retired and recovered. Sometimes I think, oh, I gave that up. And then other times I'm like, yeah, I had a problem. So let's dive in. Okay, I'm not naming any names here, but subscription boxes. Okay, now you may be thinking, Abby, that's not so bad. It's just a subscription box. But like, let me tell you why it was a bad, bad, bad idea. Subscription boxes are on a recurring basis. They are monthly or quarterly, whatever the frequency is. I know this particular box came on a quarterly basis, so four times a year, and I had another subscription to makeup boxes and that was on a monthly basis. So I got a ton of products, way too many for one person to use, honestly. And it was amazing because they were full-size products, but there was no way I was gonna go through all of that. One of the main reasons that it was so unfortunate for me and such a bad idea and a dumb thing for me to spend my money on because I forgot that it was coming. Sure, it felt like Christmas when it showed up on my doorstep and I got to open this new box of goodies and stuff to play with, but you know, it was so unrealistic. And I know that being a surprise is kind of the concept of a lot of these boxes, you know, they want to surprise their consumers with what's inside and make them feel good. But honestly, here's the issue with that. It's not an intentional purchase. Sure, I think mystery boxes are really fun, and I do that with some other things, but I don't do that on a recurring basis. I know that the whole concept of some of these boxes for subscriptions is to be a sort of surprise, but it was more than just a surprise for what was inside. I literally forgot that these were coming up, and so I would be charged in my account, and then the box would show up on my doorstep, and I would be like, oh my gosh, I forgot this was coming. Sure, it would be really exciting to see what was inside, but I really didn't ever use the stuff within the boxes, so a lot of it ended up being wasted. Either I never opened the product, or I decided to try it once or twice, and very rarely would I find a product that I would actually use on a regular basis. I think I can, I can think of three off the top of my head, and I did these subscription boxes for around a year or two consistently with several different subscriptions. All right, I'm gonna name some names. FabFitFun, they are quarterly. I did BoxyCharm and they are monthly. I also tried Ipsy for a few months, but I really did not like them because they were sample sizes, but maybe I should have done that one instead because they were samples. Yeah, I screwed up there. You know, looking back, I think I used probably on average one item per subscription box that I ever got. And knowing how many items are in those boxes each, I think FabFitFun probably has around like 10 products between big and small, 10 things in there maybe. Um, BoxyCharm has probably five. So if you think about those ratios, they're not very good. And I think that an average of one per box is still giving myself some generous credit there. There were a lot of boxes where I really wasn't impressed and I didn't use anything. So I got a nice little dopamine rush just by opening the box and then it was all downhill from there. As I sit here and tell you about all of the things I regret spending my money on, I think it's equally important to tell you about some of the more valuable things as well. Which leads us to our partner for this video, Mint Mobile. But hang on for a minute before you think about skipping ahead in the video. I've partnered with Mint Mobile because I value good service and good savings. I mean, seriously, I'm a former shopaholic here. Part of the reason why I regret spending my money on so many of these things is because they did not provide much or any value to my life. And looking back, they only gave me buyer's remorse. In this case with Mint Mobile, it's actually something that has improved the value of my lifestyle. The service, the data, the flexibility, you name it. My entire experience with Mint Mobile has been nothing short of wonderful. It was by far the easiest phone activation I've ever done, the best coverage I've ever had while traveling, and they're the most flexible phone provider yet. I really could go on and on about this. When you see those commercials with Ryan Reynolds, they're not too good to be true. Mint Mobile really is that great. 
It only takes about 15 minutes or less to switch and Mint has amazing customer service if you need any help. If you want to try them out, visit trymintmobile.com slash chicpeach to get started. When signing up through my link, you can get your first three months of the unlimited premium wireless plan for only $15 per month. But even if you're seeing this after the limited time offer has ended because it won't last forever, their regular prices are a heck of a deal. Visit the link in the description and see all of this for yourself. And thank you so much to Mint Mobile for partnering with me for this video. Moving on to the next item that was pretty dumb of me to purchase. And it wasn't just one, it was a lot. Kylie lipsticks, Kylie cosmetics, lip kits. Now I'm not hating on Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Um, regardless of how I feel about the Kardashians, I do like to keep up with the Kardashians, but that doesn't mean I agree with everything that they say and do, however, Kylie Cosmetics. I do really like her makeup. I'm actually wearing one of her blushes right now. Oh, and her eyeshadow palette. I, yeah, I do like Kylie Cosmetics. However, when she first launched her cosmetic brand, um, I went a little crazy. Ooh, yeah, okay, so we're gonna get into this. Um, I bought a lot of Kylie makeup. Mm. I'm thinking about the math right now. Ooh, it's not good. If you buy a single lipstick from her, it's about $17, I think. And if you buy a lip kit, those are about $30. Oh, I'm just thinking about all the money I wasted and it just like hurts me a little bit. <laughs> I've, I've wasted a lot of money, guys, and it makes me really sad. Oh man, all that money I could get back, but it's gone. <sighs> it's one of the things that um, gets really real for you when you start decluttering and looking back on your past purchasing regrets. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I found that I really liked her lipstick and I had a few favorite colors that I would switch through every day. And oh my gosh, it was just so exciting every time she came out with a new color and whenever I would go to her website and and then she would have a new launch and I would, I would buy new stuff and it was so exciting. But here's the bad part. I had no way to try on these lipsticks or these cosmetic colors. And if you have um, fair skin, like I do, not every color agrees with me. And that's the best way that I could put that. Um, colors look very different on me than they do in pictures on the computer. And I know that that can be the same for a lot of people who have different complexions. There were so many colors that I bought that I put on once and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. And then I uh, couldn't return it. So that was money down the drain and I cringe about it even to this day. When I did my bathroom clean out and reorganizing, I threw away a lot of the old Kylie lipsticks and lip liners. And gosh, it just makes me sad to think about all that, all that money. That was not my finest hour in this little shopping addiction of mine. And you know, even though I had several colors that looked really great and I was very fond of them, I ended up figuring out that her line of lipstick, her brand of lipstick just doesn't work for me. So yeah, after I moved on from Kylie Cosmetics, I switched to Lip Sense, but that is a whole other brand with essentially the same story. I got obsessed, I bought a lot of colors, a lot of them didn't look great on me. They were around the same price, more money wasted. I also threw away a lot of those during the bathroom declutter and reorganizing video. Gosh, I wasted so much money, so much. I'm a sucker for a good lip color, but wearing lipstick is just not my favorite thing. I used to wear it all the time and I would suffer through the dry lips, but yeah, not my finest hour. Next up would be decor, nursery decor, or clothes, or items for a baby girl. This one is a classic case of, it seemed like a really good idea at the time, but as it turns out, I actually don't have a daughter. <laughs> I've been pregnant twice, and both times it was a boy. This was honestly a case of wishful thinking. Both times I was pregnant, before we found out what exactly we were having, 
I was really hoping that it was a girl. I would love to have a girl at some point in my life, but you know, as long as I have a healthy baby, I don't care if it's a boy or a girl or an alien. <laughs> okay, maybe not an alien, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really don't care. As long as my babies are healthy, that's all that matters to me. I bought this when I was pregnant with my first son, Oliver, and I just had this really strong feeling like we were having a girl. It was wrong. We did not have a girl, <laughs> but I bought this and I could like, I've still let my son have this and play with it. Like it's not a big deal. It's pink, whatever. Pink could be his favorite color later on in life. We don't know. And when I was pregnant the second time uh, for our son, Henry, which not to get into that, but we lost him um, at the end of my first trimester. So I'm not pregnant anymore. We only have one living son. But while I was pregnant with him, before we found out that it was a boy, I started buying nursery decor. I know, like I, I should have learned my lesson the first time, but I didn't. And then we ended up having just a couple of items for a nursery that had like a little rainbow on it. The reason why this was not a good idea was because even if we would have ended up having a girl and she would have been healthy and I would have had a successful pregnancy, I ended up changing my mind on the theme. Like I bought things way too early and I get impatient. So that was just a really dumb purchase for me. And now that we're trying again for another baby, it doesn't matter if it ends up being a girl or a boy. We have a completely different nursery theme in mind and the stuff that I bought before, quite frankly, just isn't going to work. <laughs> Funny how that works, right? Maybe if I wasn't such an impulsive spender, I would have a lot more space in my house and a lot less junk to worry about. Gosh, you know, it's really funny. Um, as a social media content creator, influencer, whatever you want to call me, I get a lot of comments and someone told me that I have a shopping problem and that I am an impulsive spender. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that is brand new information. I had no idea. <laughs> like seriously, guys, <laughs> I know. Okay, now this next one is really something. Peculiar weight loss products. Gosh, I can't believe I bought this thing. Actually, I can because like I said before, I'm an impulsive spender and I've clearly had a problem. Well, these weight loss products seem too good to be true. So of course I bought them. Like it made it easy, right? No. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Don't buy it. This particular item um, was something that you like stick on your abs or on your glutes or on your arms or biceps, wherever. And then it like flexes your muscles for you. And then you get fit without actually having to work out. I know it seems, yeah, I, I know. That's why this item is on my list today because it was dumb. And uh, I actually forgot that I bought it. My husband reminded me when I was going over this list and I was like, hey, what's a really dumb thing that I've bought in the past? And this was the first thing he named. Not my finest hour either. I have a few of those. So this was definitely a dumb purchase and I only used it a few times over how many years that it was laying around my house. The first time I used it, I used it on my butt and I put it on and I, I couldn't see very well because it was on my behind and there was this little remote thing that stuck, that stuck to it. And I was trying to turn it off because it was getting a little bit too intense. And then I was hitting the wrong button. So it was getting more and more intense and it hurt so bad. And I had to like literally rip this thing off. It was horrible. <laughs> I ripped one of the items and uh, yeah. So that was an experience. That was, that was quite the experience. And then fast forward a couple years later, I decided to try it again and it worked better. I didn't hurt myself that time, but I did it for maybe like two days. I don't have any abs because uh, one thing that you need for this type of stuff is consistency. 
So I don't know if it actually works or not because I never actually kept that up. So as I've said, if the item seems too good to be true, chances are it probably is. And I would just not risk it. Don't buy it. Lesson learned. Now my final item on the list for you today is actually my backup wedding dress. I got married in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. It was during October, so some things were starting to lift, but it was very unknown. We just did not know how things were gonna go. I was supposed to be sending out my wedding invitations and I had no idea if our venue was going to be open or not. So we had to delay sending out invitations until we could hear back from our vendor to know if they were planning to be open. And just because they planned to be open did not mean that that was actually going to stay the same. So we got married October 10th of 2020 and we did not send out our invitations until mid-August. So I had all the invitations ready to go. I was ready to send them out. <laughs> and all we needed to hear was that we got the go ahead and we could plan on having our wedding there. So mid-August comes and I finally got to send out my invitations. Now, maybe that's a normal time frame for some people, but we had a lot of out-of-town family, so we were trying to get those invitations out 90 days beforehand, and that did not happen. Here is why I bought a backup wedding dress. I was not sure what type of wedding we were gonna be able to have. I had like five different weddings planned out, depending on what was going on with the pandemic. We actually had about 400 people added to our original guest list for the wedding. I know that's a lot, but we have, I for one have a very large family and I wanted everyone to be included. I wanted it to be one big party and it was, but the guest list was substantially lower when all said and done after all of the restrictions of the pandemic. We ended up having about 150 people at our wedding and we practiced social distancing as well as we could. Yeah, my wedding wasn't a super spreader, but some people did end up getting sick. Everyone was okay. <laughs> Everyone was fine. That's all that matters. So because I was not sure if we were going to be able to have our intended wedding, I didn't know if we were getting married at a church, in the courthouse, in my parents' backyard. I had no idea what was going on. So I ended up looking through David's bridal and found a backup dress. Oh my gosh. I'm looking back on this right now and my backup wedding dress was totally the A-line version of my senior prom dress. Sli still slightly different, but like very similar. <laughs> That's funny. But anyway, I never ended up wearing it and I would totally try it on for you guys, but that was, um, several pounds ago and there's no way I'm squeezing into that. I'm not even gonna attempt it. Why was this such a mistake to buy? Looking back, no matter what was happening with our wedding, I don't care if we got married in our driveway, I would have still worn my original wedding dress because considering everything that the pandemic was taking away from us and our wedding experience, and I could make a whole video on that to tell you everything that happened, but we'll save that for another day. With everything that was taken away from our wedding experience because of the pandemic, I was not gonna let it take away my ability to wear the most beautiful wedding dress that I could ever imagine wearing. It, it was the perfect dress and there was no way that I was going to let the pandemic take that away from me. I was just trying to be prepared and I bought another dress on the off chance that I would need it because that made me feel better. But in hindsight, it was totally unnecessary and I won't say that it was a dumb purchase, but like I added it to the list because it was totally unnecessary and money that I didn't have to spend. So there you have it, folks. Those are some of the dumbest things I've ever bought. And just because I put them on my list does not mean that they are dumb for everyone to buy. They just did not make sense for me. Now, just remember, it's not about never making mistakes. It's about learning from your past and moving forward. So if you've wasted some money like I have and you've bought things that don't make sense for you and you feel stupid or dumb for ever having it, I get it. I've totally been there, clearly. So just do your best and remember that it's about moving forward. 
drop a comment and let me know some of the things that you regret buying or some of the dumb purchases that you've made. I would love to hear all about it. I would love to know that I'm not the only one who wasted a bunch of money on stuff that did not make sense to buy. Make sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I post new content. But that is all for today. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.